Hello, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from Allery Chemistry and welcome to this video on OCRA polyesters and polyamides. So this video is dedicated to the OCRA specification. So if you are studying OCRA uh, chemistry, then this video will have everything you need to know for this particular topic and nothing more. So it is specifically designed for you. Um, the video is part of a long series of different videos for OCRA for year one and two, and the full series is available for free uh, on my Allery Chemistry YouTube channel. Um, all I ask is that you just subscribe. Just subscribe to the video, you get all the updates, um, and um, it just shows your support for the channel as well, and I'll, I will keep on making them for as long as people uh, show an interest and uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want your own private copy of these slides that I've created here, you can purchase them from the test shop. So if you click on the link in the comments box of the description box, sorry, the description box at the bottom of the video, uh, and you'll be able to get a hold of them there. They're great for revision, great value. You can use it on your, your tablet, your smartphone, uh, on the move, really easy, and allows you to scroll through at your leisure. Um, and like I say, the videos here are designed for revision only. Um, you do need to integrate uh, this into your other work that you do, whether you're at school or college, or if you're doing it, if you're doing it on your own. Um, and also, you need to integrate it with an exam technique um, because it's one thing knowing the content, but it's another thing actually sitting the exam and doing it. And just because you go through this doesn't mean you can answer the questions. Um, luckily, I have got some um, videos on uh, on my channel that allows you to. Basically, I walk through the um, some past papers and go through some of the techniques and and spotting, um, um, uh, spotting some potential pitfalls that the examiners may throw at you. So, yeah. So this, like I say, this video is dedicated to OCRA and it meets these specification points that are taken from the specification, obviously. Okay, so let's make a start and let's look at um, different types of polymers. So we're going to start with addition polymers first. So. Alkenes are the monomers that make up um, addition polymers. So addition polymers, as the name suggests, is where you add something together and you make the long polymer. Um, so you've got to remember, you would have seen addition polymers in module four, and I do have videos in my year um, year one slides, because module four is in year one. So if you have a look in the year one um, playlist, and you can find them there if you need a bit of a refresher. So to make polypropene, we need um, the monomer propene, so it's the alkene, um, and add a few of these together to make your polymer, which is polypropene. So there's your monomer propene. Um, the double bond opens up, and that forms the, the polymer chain, which is there, as you can see. Um, and remember, N at the end of the bracket means it's many repeat units. So this is what we call a repeat unit. So it's the it's the part of the polymer that repeats over and over and over again. And N is just however many that may be. Um, there you go. So this is a repeat unit. And obviously the double bond is not in the repeat unit because this is a section of the polymer that repeats over and over again. Another feature as well that we've got to be aware of is we have trailing bonds. Now trailing bonds extend beyond the bracket. And basically that shows that there are more units that are repeating left and right of this repeat unit. So it is important to put these extra long bonds in. And so this is showing two repeat units. So it's just showing you what a repeat unit is and how this how this reoccurs. But obviously that can go on, uh, that can go on and on. But just make sure that because the exam board may ask you, the examiners may ask you to write down a specific number of repeat units. Um, so make sure you're doing it correctly and always draw trailing bonds um, um, leaving a, a square bracket as well. So polyalkenes are what we call saturated molecules. Um, they're normally non-polar and they're very unreactive generally because there's no there's no elements here where you can get uh, attacking molecules to, to break this up. So as a result, they don't degrade well in landfills. So if you think of plastics that are made from these types of polymers, they're not very biodegradable and that's not good for the environment because they just sit under the ground for years and years and years. Um, so obviously scientists are looking at ways in which we can develop um, uh, plastics which are um, biodegradable um, and uh, effectively better for the environment. So um, so these are addition polymers. Okay, the other type of polymer is a condensation polymer. So condensation polymers are comprised of two main, uh, two main types. You've got polyamides and you've got polyesters and hence the name of this PowerPoint. So 
um, the name of the video, should I say. So condensation polymer polymerization is where we get two different monomers with at least two functional groups, and these react together. Um, and we get a, a link that's made, and it's either an amide or an ester link that's made. And we call it condensation polymerization because water is eliminated when we join these two monomer units together. So the link really determines the type of polymer that's produced. So I can say there's two types of polymer. <coughs> Polyamides um, is formed by reacting diamines and dicarboxylic acids together. Uh, and polyesters, and you can see a polyamide there, which is um, this bit on the bottom. So that's an example of polyamide. So it'd be used in, for example, rope, towing rope, gardening rope. Uh, and polyesters are formed by reacting a diol, which is just a double carboxylic acid, but you'll see this in a moment. And a, uh, sorry, a a, a double alcohol uh, and then we uh, react it with a dicarboxylic acid which does have two carboxylic acids at either end of the group um, and react them together but we'll see some examples all the way through this this video uh, this is an example of polyester which is commonly used in fibers most you'll find if you look on the labels of your clothing you'll see that it's likely to say polyester on it as well okay so let's look at some polyamides first so polyamides are formed by reacting dicarboxylic acids and diamines together. So amide links are formed when dicarboxylic acids react with diamines. And we have to use dicarboxylic acids and diamines as they have functional groups either side of the molecule. And we need that because if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to form chains either side of that monomer unit. Okay. So let's have a look. Here's a dicarboxylic acid, and you can see what it has is it's just a molecule, whatever this R group is, it could be anything, but it must have two carboxyl groups either side of the molecule. So that's all a dicarboxylic acid is. And a diamine is just exactly the same. It's just we've got two amine groups either side of an R group that's in the middle. And this forms your polyamines. Now you can see here when we react to carboxylic acid and an and an amine together, we get an amide. And you would have seen that in the amines and amides topic um, in module six. So if you're unsure on them types of reactions, then go and have a look at that video. But basically, this is just the same type of reaction, but because this is a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine, we form a, an amide link. But also, you can see here, we have another opportunity for this end to bond with another carboxylic acid later on. So that's why they've got to be diamines and dicarboxylic acids. And we form polyamide, and there's our amide link. And because it's condensation polymerization, what we've removed to form that link is water. And so the water, as you can see, is formed there. That's eliminated, uh, and that's why we call it condensation. So let's have a look at an example. You don't need to know um, these specifically for the exam, but it's just showing you an example of a, um, of a polyamide. So Kevlar is one of them, used for bulletproof vests, uh, car tires, sports equipment, because it's lightweight, but really, really strong. So Kevlar is made from benzene, 1,4-dicarboxylic acid, and 1,4-diaminobenzene. So it's made from a diamine, a dicarboxylic acid. So this is just here as an example. You don't need to know these specific ones. Um, but benzene, there's your um, dicarboxylic acid there with the benzene molecule in the middle. And there's your diamino uh, benzene, which is on there. So you can see these look quite horrendous when you look at these molecules, but you're just looking at the functional groups. And this is really why I'm showing you this. And it forms Kevlar. Now you can see we still have our link that's in the middle. There we are. Okay, so we still have our link that's in the middle. Um, and this is the formula for Kevlar. But you can see this is also the repeat unit. So this, this unit here will repeat and repeat and repeat and keep on repeating. Um, to form to form the Kevlar molecule, but it's just to show you that it may look complicated, but it's the same process. Okay, let's look at another example, which is nylon 6-6. Uh, this is another example of a, of a polyamide uh, used in carpets and clothing, except this time we're using hexane dioic acid and 1,6-diaminohexane, but it's exactly the same process. Okay, so there's our dicarboxylic acid, and there's our diamine, this is just to show you that the process is exactly the same. And there we have it. So we have, whoops, so we have our nylon 6-6, which is there, and this is our repeat unit. So it might look very complicated, but if you see how that's been formed from this and this, and we've just lost 
the water from the middle bit here, we've joined them two together, there's your amide link. So they might give you complicated molecules like this, and they might be expecting you to then use the two molecules they give you to form a repeat unit. So just make sure you are comfortable with that. Don't worry about how complicated it may look. Okay, so polyesters um, are formed by using a dicarboxylic acid and a diol. So just like before, where you have carboxylic acid reacting with an est uh, reacting with an alcohol, you form an ester. Okay, if you're not too sure on that, there is a video that that I talk into um, talk into I talk about uh, carboxylic acids reacting with alcohols to form esters. So this is just the same. We're just using dicarboxylic acid and diols. So ester links are formed when they react. And here's an example. So there's a dicarboxylic acid which we've seen before. And there's our diol. So a diol has two alcohol groups left and right, exactly the same principle. So then we're going to react these to form a polyester. And we have our ester link in the middle, as you can see there. So there's no difference there. But again, we have removed water. So there it is. So remove that and remove water. So there's no difference between polyester and a polyamide. We're still removing the water from the middle and joining them together, except in this example, we're forming a polyester. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of a polyester. So terylene, again, you don't need to know the exact formulas for these. It's just here as an example, because um, polymers can be quite complicated. So it's just to show you how simple it can be to, um, to actually spot the actual join and what you're writing down. So it's made from benzene, 1,4-dicarboxylic acid, and ethane, 1,2-diol. So here's our benzene, 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. So we've still got the two carboxylic acids either side, and there's our diol there. And we're going to react them, them two together to form your terylene. So there's terylene there. So you can see that's your repeat unit. It looks com looks complicated, um, but it's not too it's not too bad, hopefully. Um, but again, when you're looking at your trailing bonds, make sure you're losing the OH there and you're losing the hydrogen there because you must lose water. That's how you know where your trailing bonds go because this is a, a condensation polymerization. Okay, let's look at hydrolysis. So condensation polymers can be hydrolyzed. So remember, um, just like within the esters topic that you would have seen, um, you can hydrolyze an ester. Hydrolysis means hydro means water. Lysis means to break. So hydrolysis is to break using water. That's all it means. Sounds complicated, but it's not. So to produce the original monomers, we have to break the polymer chain using hydrolysis. So it's just the reverse of polymerization. So it's not too complicated. So you can see here, here's our polyamide. And what we're gonna do is react that with water, okay? And what we're gonna do is produce our two products, our two monomers that we use to make the polymer in the first place. So we've got a dicarboxylic acid and we've got our diamine. Now you can see what we've done is we've concluded in black where the OH and the H has come from. And that comes from the two molecules of water and that's why we need two molecules of water to complete our monomer our monomer chains or monomer units so here we are there we are so to determine the monomer units what we've got to do is break the bond in the middle of the amide or ester link in the repeat unit so that's what you need to do is find where that amide or ester link is and then what we do is we add oh and h to each of the monomer units as i've just shown you there just before so remember, for polyester, you must produce a dicarboxylic acid and a diol, okay? Um, and for polyamide, as you can see there, we must produce a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. So we must produce them two products. You can't produce anything else. Okay. So looking get back to addition polymers, we need to try and do the same as well. And we can actually work out which monomer units are used to, for, to form the polymer that's in front of you. So they might give you a polymer chain and say, right, which monomers we use to make this. So a monomer unit can be determined by finding the repeat unit, which will always have at least two carbon backbone. It must have at least that, okay, because there's got to be a double bond, and the double bond will only exist between two carbons. So the monomer can be found in addition polymers uh, by removing the bonds between the repeat units and inserting a double bond between the two carbon atoms. Okay, so you'll see, you'll see what I mean here. So here's a section of an addition polymer, which is there. So what we've got to do is try and find out which monomer units we use to make that. 
So notice this is one repeat unit, but notice the absence of the double bond. So we haven't included the double bond here. All we've done is segregated one of the repeat units. So that's what we've done there. So that's the first thing. Find out the repeat unit, write it down, segregate it. Then once we've done that, we then need to put that double bond in between the two carbons that make up the backbone of the repeat, repeat unit. So there's the two carbons there. There is a carbon there, but that's acting as a branch. We always write alkenes like this so spot the two carbons put your double bond in and there it is and there's your your monomer unit that's been used to make that so in this case um this is the alkene uh, which is a propene that's been used to make this polymer okay and we can work out the repeat unit from the monomer as well so for example here is the monomer um this is a different monomer we're going to use just to add a bit of spice to it so we're going to work out the repeat unit so what we need to do is draw down the two carbon atoms first and instead of the double bond we're going to place a single bond like you can see there and then we're going to add in the groups there we are so these are the groups that make it up so we've just removed the double bond but we've drawn it as like a letter h because it's easier to to see polymers that way okay so we've just stretched them bonds out again and then finally, we need to add our trailing bonds um, that make up the backbone of our polymer. So that's very important. And there we are, we've, we've formed our repeat unit. So it's fairly straightforward, but you're just looking for the two carbon backbone. Everything else can be added as side groups. Okay, and we can do exactly the same. We can work out the monomer from a polymer chain for condensation polymers as well. So the monomer can be determined by finding the repeat unit, but this is in a condensation polymer. So we're looking for either an amide link or an ester link in our, in our molecules. So here you can see polyester. We've got our ester link there, which is in the middle. And the monomer can be found by breaking the bonds between the ester link or the amide link, depending what you're what you're reacting it with. And then we add H or OH to either end um, of both molecules that we formed. So there it is. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So we're looking particularly for um, the ester link and looking where we can actually break that, uh, that chain there. Okay, but condensation polymers can be more complicated and can contain amide and ester link. So we can have we can have both types in there. So molecules with amine and alcohol groups can react with dicarboxylic acids because that's the common denominator. They're all reacting with dicarboxylic acids. And this forms a more complicated condensation polymer. So you can see here, we've got our dicarboxylic uh, acid and we've got an alcohol and an, am an amine group on one of the molecules there. So that's this one here. Okay, so you can see that there. So then what we can do is form are more complicated polymer so effectively we've got and i've color coded it so you can see so you can see what's going on here so you can see we've got the we've still got our uh, amide link here but we can form ester links as well um later on down the line but it's just showing you that they can be a bit more complicated okay so there's your amide link and so the ester link will appear at the end of the repeat units as you can see okay so they can be formed from one type of monomer as well in some cases. So all the examples we've seen here is multiple types of monomer. So molecules with carboxylic acid at either end of an alcohol or an amine group can react with itself to form a more complicated condensation monomer, uh, polymer. Sorry. So here we go. Um, you can see here, this is just one monomer. We're not using two here, the same monomer, and we're just going to um, react them um, with each other to form your amide link so it's just the same the same type of uh, monomer unit so they do exist as well and that's it so that's the uh, topic on polyesters and polyamides the best thing with these is just to try and keep uh, practicing them making sure that you can spot the amide links and where to break them um, please subscribe to the channel um, so all the videos are on here are all free and i'll keep on making them as long as people keep subscribing to the channel i'll keep on making them um, the um, PowerPoints, like I say, are available to purchase. If you click on the link in the description box, you'll be able to get a hold of them there. But that's it. Bye-bye.